All right, it's your friendly neighborhood surveyor, and I thought this job would be a kind of a cool way to explain how we start setting control points. So all that area out there where it's all fenced, um, I'm in Palm Desert, California, so by Palm Springs. That's a future site. It's going to be homes like that over there, or I think those are apartments over there, but these are going to be homes like those over there. And so we're going on a monument search right now for the boundary we're going to do this week. So I would say um, our control starts with the boundary. And from the boundary, we're going to set some aerial control. And that'll be stuff that we can use later on. Because once we do aerial control, then we're asked to put control points like, so like the sidewalk. We would put control points along the sidewalk for the graders. And what they do is they lock on with their uh, GPS and we no longer really do rough grade anymore. They come out here, they use our perimeter control. We'll put a couple there in the middle and, uh, and they'll grade everything. We have to certify it later, but um, there's really no um, rough grade anymore. So between the monuments for the boundary, aerial targets, and um, control points later on for, um, for a grading, that's kind of how we start our control. So here are two monuments. Um, oh, let me get that thing there. So that's just a spike and washer. That's the uh, center line intersection of this street and that street. And then there's a BC or EC or whatever you guys want to call it, a PT or PC. These are copper welds. So there you go, right there. They have an LS or RC number stamped on it, usually punched, and the copper doesn't uh, pick up on the metal detector, but the metal shaft does. So we can use these as both, you know, aerial targets and um, uh, future control points as well. So here's an example of a control point. We're on a different job right now, but uh, I just set a magnel here. I call it, it's either a control point or a working point because we haven't leveled through it or anything. We haven't turned angles to it, which it's just a trigged point, but it's just for us to set these little patio walls. So that's an example of a control point, but this is, um, I would say like sixth generation. And I'll explain these generations after. Other things we use as control points. So we have to set final monumentation. So we've done that after the final lift of the street. So that's just a one inch iron pipe with a tag. And, um, so these are set as final monumentation, then we've leveled through a lot of these. And again, this could be, um, it's a different generation control, but it's final monuments. And then we elevated them and uh, now we can use them as control points. So as the job progresses, you know, we keep setting to control points. Now this catch basin does not have a control point on it, but I like to set control points once catch, catch basins are poured, because they're not gonna move. Elevation is always going to be good, and um, it's usually towards like the, um, I don't know, the first quarter of the job site. Um, so catch basins are a great place to put random control. So here's another job that is pretty much completed. We're doing these build-out lots um, form certs, and we use our PL prods as control as well. So we've scribed out where they are, we set the nail and tag, and every single one of these has been located horizontally and then the vertical is um, trigged in. All right, back to control. Um, so the Palm Desert, Coachella area, the beginning of the video, this is the job site. So I was talking about um, control and I would say your control starts with the boundary. So this boundary here, we got, um, there's an intersection. We found, um, where's the center line? Found an intersection there, uh, point there, bum, 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 bum. All the curve points, tangent points, there's there, and so on and so forth. So our boundary, let's see, uh, PRC, do, 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 some there, there, and we got some other ones, tangent. So we got our boundary points. These are the original points. We're asked, 
what we were asked to do as well, or um, what we're going to do is we're going to fly it with our own drone. So we have nine aerial targets, two inside and um, seven around the perimeter. So those points there, we just set mag nails in, uh, in a bike lane around, around the point, or we used um, monuments as long as they weren't, uh, uh, I get a hole, push my laundry away. So we have, I think we located 30, 30 points today, 30, 31 points today, and that includes two benchmarks to tie it in, but so our original control is going to be all the boundary and all the aerial targets. Later on, we will be asked to go around the perimeter. So we already have some aerial targets, but along the sidewalk around, we'll probably put another, I don't know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, probably uh, 15 to 20 points, mostly around the perimeter. And, and a couple inside for the graders. What we'll use for those points, if they go inside, uh, like we put them on the sidewalk, then we'll use a, um, a, a nail and tag and drill into the sidewalk and set that nail and tag with our control point. Like our tags say, uh, our company name then CNT. Um, Inside, if we set some, well, I'll, I'll get to that point in a second. Um, so it'll be around the perimeter, and the couple points we set inside, they're going to be graded out. So I would say the boundary and the um, and the aerial targets are going to be your primary control. The perimeter control for the graders, I would say that's going to be our the beginning of our first generation control. And the reason why I say that, and we use like first generation, second generation, is because once the graders start grading all these lots, then we're going to put control inside. And that'll be for our use for staking, like all the underground stuff. Um, you know, that's, that's the way it normally starts for us is we have sewer, storm drain, water, stuff like that. So this whole job here is about 1,500 feet um, lengthwise and widthwise, and I don't know, it's about two and a half miles if you walk around it, which I did three times today. So we will set points on, on these pads, on these finished pads. We will recess them down about three-tenths, three-four-tenths down below the finished grade of that pad. That way, if they grade it again, our control point doesn't get... Uh, doesn't get bumped or bent or taken out and what we normally set on pads are 5 8 inch rebar with the cap that also has our company name and control point um, we flag them out and they will either be set by uh, GPS and then we do a level circuit through them all or we will um, turn sets and still do a level circuit through them all. At that, we, we normally call that our first generation. It's our first generation because it's um, because it's for us. It's primarily for us. We have our primary, you know, from the original boundary. But our first generation is the stuff that we work off of. Um, because over time, you know, they may redo sidewalks and curb and all that stuff. They may wipe out intersections. And so first generation, when it comes to second and third and fourth generation, um, our feeling is that the first generation is your, is your tightest, but you know, everything is fitting within this perimeter. Well, so we normally go from, or I normally go from like control points to working points. Working points are just temporary. They may just be a 60D nail just to um, accomplish a couple things. And to me, it's a temporary point. It's just a way to code something that's temporary. I would say like a good example of a second generation control point is, let's say they got all the underground in and they started to put in um, catch basins. 
at that point, I start I start putting um, control points on curve and catch basins and stuff like that. Catch basins especially, and we'll usually just do like a scribed X on there with our point number, and because that catch basin is not going to move, and it's a good elevation check, and um, we sometimes level through it, but I would say like our second and third generation points are pretty much trigged all the way through. Um, and it, and we start setting those points because as they start building houses, it, it makes it to where those original or first generation points can't be used. You know, you can't see one to the other. Um, going back to the first generation, how far apart do we normally set them? Our office believes the more control, the better. So we kind of have them about, I'd say about 600 feet apart. I love our lots here. Uh, they don't have distances. Let's just say they're 50 feet or say they're 50 feet wide. So we will have them every 600 feet. That way, you know, like our data collector starts losing um, connection or we start having problems or there, you know, there's, there's going to be vertical problems the further you go. So we try to stay within like, 350, 400 feet away from, from our control. And if we're doing anything like houses and stuff like that, um, we're going to be a little bit closer. So our first generation is going to be stuff on the pad, uh, rebar cap. Our second generation is as we're, um, as they're building houses, now we're moving that control to more secure places. Then I'd say our, you know, any, anything third and fourth generation is going to be almost a mix between control points and working points because, you know, during that time, we're probably putting in final monumentation. So we got um, center line of the street. We do um, uh, PL prods out here in California. So it's a production of the property line to the top of curb. And we normally, you know, uh, we normally store those points. So it's a nail and tag on top of curb. And so we have a trigged, horizontal and uh, vertical and those make it nice because as you're setting those you know now you got this great control and if it's like in a tangent line you know you can set up on a on a curb here back sight nice um, tangent line you can check the ones in between and you know you're off to the races so first generation are on the pads second third fourth generation is just moving around as as needed but I would say second generation is more, for me, it's going to be the stuff being moved onto the um, catch basins and stuff like that that's a little more, a little bit more permanent. And those points seem to work out really well with, um, with the rest of the job. So I hope that helps. Um, someone asked me about monuments. So out in California, um, like centerline monumentation, everything from um, iron pipe, Usually one inch, there are some two inch. Depends on when they were set. So if that's an old monument, I'm talking like 40s or 30s or something like that, it may be a railroad spike with an X on it. Um, it all depends on what the city or what the county um, accepts. So uh, a lot of places are one inch up pipe or like in Los Angeles, it's a two inch pipe. If it's a street or inside the track, they may accept a uh, spike and washer. Um, if it's um, see a spike and washer, the uh, PL prod is a uh, nail and tag. Uh, and then spike and washer, anything from like a gear spike, boat spike, um, you know, just your mag spike, stuff like that. Um, and then we have well monuments out here as well. So, you know, it'd be a hole in the ground, which is a brass or uh, brass or aluminum disc down in a well. That's the surface of the street. There's like a well cap. Think about like the water valves with the caps on them. That's kind of what they look like. Uh, then our, you know, obviously, you know, section corners, stuff like that are normally brass discs anywhere between two inch to four inch. So that's our street monumentation normally. Property corners are normally um, iron pipe um, or if it falls on a wall, it's a nail and tag. And 
Um, anything within the track is up to the county, but it's normally spike and it's normally spike and washer. So that's it. Let me know if you guys have any more questions about control. But that's how that's how I handle it. We got our primary with the boundary aerial targets if you set them and um, control for the graders. That's all for us. It's all done GPS. And then our first generation is as soon as they got the pads built, then we can recess them down, get all the underground done, and then as they start pouring curb and um, any you know any type of um, fixed item. Uh, especially catch basins, then start moving. You know, as you're working, throw some control points out. Throw them out, throw them out, throw them out. And to me, that's the chainman's job. That's the chainman's job. As many control points as you can get, throw them all out there. Um, I think that's it. Survey out.